In this video, we're going to tackle the topic of games in education, using games for teaching and learning. And in this particular video, the focus I'm going to take is strictly on the teacher creating games that will help his or her students to learn a particular subject area. Now, of course, you could have students make those games as well. The students could make games for each other to play. And, of course, there's a whole other topic of students building their own computer games from scratch. And I do have a video on that topic already, and I hope to make more in the future. You can use tools like Scratch. That's the name of one of the tools. There's Multimedia Fusion that can help you to do the same kinds of things, and several other options. Game Press is one that I've made a video for. Tiny Tap is another pretty easy example that's pretty exciting. So I hope you'll check out the videos I've made already on those topics. But in this video today, it's more about creating a teaching and learning computer game. And you can see this logo that I have here, Games and Learning. I got it from this website, gamesandlearning.org. If you want to learn more about some of the potential of using games in education, this is an interesting website to go to and read and learn more about the topic. So this particular video is actually a little different than some of the ones I've done in the past. You're going to get an overview of just a few tools that are out there that I have used in the past that I think are great. But I'm also hoping for lots of feedback from you. A lot of times I post a video and it gets lots of views and it gets a few likes and things like that, but I don't get sometimes a lot of feedback in return. And I hope I'll get some in response to this particular video because, to be honest, I'm not very happy with the quality of the options out there right now for developing quick games that are educational. So if you know of great resources that are out there, please post it in the comments. Please share it with other viewers and with me, and I would love to learn from you. So let's take a look at the first tool that I can recommend that I have used. It's called classtools.net. It's created by Russell Tarr. He's uh, an educator, and um, I follow him on Twitter and in other ways, and I've found his content to be always of good quality and interesting. So this is his website, classtools.net, and it has several interesting tools for teachers, like a random name picker. It's also got a tool called Fakebook. And there's lots of other tools here, graphic organizers, there's a countdown timer. So you should check out this website for more than just games, but take a look at the games that it does have. It's got an interesting game that I have used several times called the Dustbin Game Generator. And this is a category game. When you click on it, what it does is you click Start and it gives you four category boxes. So for example, I could go in here and I could type in Noun and then I just hit tab and it moved me down to the next section. I'll call this verb, hit tab, adjective, hit tab, adverb. Now instead of hitting tab, you could just click with the mouse. So now that I've got four categories, and these could be any four categories that you want, you then need to click in the box underneath each category and type in some examples of items in that category. So for a noun, house, car, boat, New York, etc. I could go on and on. Next we have verb. Jumping, swimming, skating. All right, I'll stop there and give me a minute and I'll put in some adverbs and adjectives. Okay, so I've got several items in each category. Now I can just click proceed. Now if I want to, I could password protect this. I'll just put a password in there and without knowing that password, you won't be able to edit this game. The other thing I should do before I proceed is give this quiz or game a name. So I'll click up there, do select all, and or you could just delete it out, and I'll give it a name. So parts of speech, game. Now I can click proceed, and look what it does. It comes up with one of the items in my, one of my category lists. That's a noun. So I put it in the noun dustbin or garbage can, and I'm rewarded because that's the correct place. That's an adjective. That's an adjective. That's a verb. Now if I put it in the wrong place, it rejects it. And notice that I am being timed. So it is possible to get a high score or to get some points for being extra fast. And so that's the incentive for the students to try to hurry. Give me a minute to finish playing this amazing game and then we'll continue. Okay, when you finish it gives you a game over, it shows your final score. 
and you can play it again if you want to or, or whatnot. If you want to edit the questions, you have to know the password, right? And so this is a categorizing game, and it's useful in lots of different subjects in school. You could use it in a language class, you could use it in math, all sorts of different topics, just depending on the categories that you put in. I think it's very educational and it's kind of fun. Now to make this available to your students so they can play it, you just go down here where it says embed into blog or web page. Just click that gear that's there and it takes you to a screen that gives you some options for sharing this game so that it's playable. There's a URL. I could just highlight that URL, copy it. I could post it on a blog, on a website. I could email it to people, whatever. As long as they have this link, they'll be able to play my game. Now, if you have the ability to embed in your website, you could use this embed code. Highlight it, copy it, paste it, and the game that you've just created will appear on that website or blog where you paste it in to the HTML editor. So I'm going to click OK. So this is one of the quickest, easiest, simplest ways to create an educational game online. And yet it's very beneficial. It helps students practice and think and categorize different concepts and ideas. So great little game for free on this website, classtools.net. Now they also have some other games. You'll notice that there's a Pac-Man game. This is a drill and practice kind of game. It's great for memorization. I know we sometimes try to look down on memorization and on drill and practice, but there are certain content areas where you just can't get around it. I mean, in a math class, it really does help to have your multiplication tables memorized. It really does help to have other math facts memorized. Same with foreign language. If you have the vocabulary memorized, you're just, you're gonna speak better. So this Pac-Man game, the way it works, you just click on it, click Create New Game, you give it a title, put in questions, and then after each question you'll notice that there's an asterisk that separates the question from the possible answers. You would put the correct answer immediately after the question, and again keeping an asterisk between the two, and then you can put another asterisk and put in incorrect answers if you'd like to after that. So anyway, just put those into this box, submit it, and you've got a game that you can use with your students. Similar to that, there's some other games on this website. You can go here where it says select or search for a template. You can also just browse down and find it below, but to save me some time, I'm just going to click here, and you'll notice that there is something called the arcade game. So you click on that, arcade game, and it's the arcade game generator. And what this does is you create a quiz, put in the title, put in the questions, and again, it's question, asterisk, answer. And then when you're done, I'll just do this sample here, but when you're done, it lets you play that game in one of several different ways. So yes, you can play it as Pac-Man. You can play those questions in this Manic Miner game, in Word Shoot, Pong, Asteroids, Cannonball, Matching Pairs. It's kind of like concentration or memory. And then they also have flashcards. Now, some of these games are quirkier and uh, weirder than others, like Manic Miner is a little strange, honestly, but uh, it is kind of fun, and these are games that the students can play to help them practice their vocabulary. So let's look at Manic Miner just briefly. I'll click play. The game starts up. I'm this miner in the lower right corner, and I'm using the arrow keys on the keyboard to control that gentleman there. If I push up, he jumps. So left, right, and up. Those are my options. Notice it says there's a word here, and I'm supposed to match up that word with what it means. So it means something, and I grab the word something. Okay, so the answer here is in the back, so I grabbed it. Eventually, you'll get enough correct answers that you want to get this key, and then to finish the level, you go to find that toilet, okay, and you jump down the toilet. Don't ask me why I didn't make this game, but uh, kind of a fun little arcade game based on answering questions, okay? So check out classtools.net. It's great for more than just games, but it's got several games that you can create, and then your students can play them. Now, a wonderful similar tool that I used back in the day is called whattolearn.com, and you can see it's a numeral two. And this has several arcade games that are editable, and you can go in, put in your questions and answers. And back in the day, this was a wonderful resource, completely free. Then it was purchased, I believe, by a textbook company, and they started charging for it. And my understanding is that it's kind of on its last legs. I might be wrong about that. I hope I am. But if you go now to sign up for this, whether you want to pay or want to do it for free, notice that it says they're not currently providing options for sign up. 
okay? You can still go there and play games. So go do searches for games and you should be able to find some fun games to play or have your students play. But it doesn't seem like that there's an option now to make your own games. When you go to make a game without an account, these don't seem to be clickable. You can play an example game, but there doesn't seem to be a way to create your own games. So check out this website. It used to be amazing, but it's kind of lost some of its luster, at least for me, because I know I used to be able to make these games and create them and have my students play them, and they were a lot of fun and very educational. The last website that I wanted to talk about is called superteachertools.us. Now, I think superteachertools.com takes you to the same place. That's the URL that I'm used to using for this website, but officially it's now .us. Like it says here, you can review content with fun games, and again, the teacher or the students can make these games. I think most often the teacher would make them for the students to play. And this website is pretty similar to classtools.net. It has some of the same kinds of tools, like a random name generator. It's got a great group maker, seating chart maker, uh, classroom countdown timer, classroom timer, and some QR tools. And by the way, classtools.net also has QR tools that are kind of exciting. But the topic of this video today is games, so let's focus in on the games. This website, superteachertools.us, focuses on game show type games. So you can see that there's a Jeopardy style review game. There's also Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And then they've got an arcade kind of game called Speed Match. This is a great website to check into now and then to see what they have available. Let's just get a glimpse of some of these games. And I did make a video tutorial in the past about the Jeopardy Maker. But I'm just going to click on the game that's already there. And you can see it brings up a random game. This one has states and capitals, government, that kind of topic. So what I would do is I would put the students into small groups. Each group has a captain. The captain, one at a time, is asked, okay, what would you like to pick? Let's say the captain says history for 30. You click on it, the question pops up, and the students have to answer. Okay, if you want, you can let them go till the end of the timer, or they can go beyond that. But when you're ready as the teacher, you say, okay, let's see if your answer is right. You click view answer. If it is right, you click on scoreboard, and let's say team one got it right, I just click on this plus sign, it automatically gives the right number of points to team one. You can adjust their scores if you need to, changing it to 20, changing it down to 10, whatever you need to do. You can also award partial points to some of these other teams, and then click game board to go back. Notice it remembers that I already selected one of these questions, and then play can move to the next team from there. Now you can create these games pretty simply. Just click create a new game. There's a form to fill out, including the name of the game and so forth. Please check out my other video that shows how to make these Jeopardy style review games. Okay, going back to Super Teacher Tools, there is also Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Speed Match is an arcade game. I'll just click play now so you can see what it's like. So what is the capital of California? That's Sacramento. So I just dragged the right answer down. Who was the third president of the United States? Okay, Thomas Jefferson. So this is just a speed game where you're trying to match up the questions and the answers, but uh, kind of a nice game. And you can customize the questions and answers just by clicking make a new game now. You go in, you fill in this form, you click create this game, and it will give you a form to fill out with the questions and answers. When you're done, just click Save Game Changes and it will give you a URL for your game. You can share that out. And that's the way it works also with the Jeopardy game and the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire game. Okay, so just a quick overview of these three tools that I really love. ClassTools.net, that's wonderful, especially for arcade games and then other tools that I didn't feature in this video. Next, we have What to Learn, that used to be fantastic, but its better days seem to be behind it. And then we also do have SuperTeacherTools.us, that is wonderful for game shows and other tools as well. If you have suggestions for me, for similar tools that uh, might be newer or have better features or better options for teachers and students, please put those in the comments. I would love to find out about them. 
One thing that all three of these have in common, or at least had in common, is that they're all free. There are upgrade options for superteachertools.us and also for classtools.net. If you want to pay, you can get even better features. But they're wonderful just for free. So if you know of others that are free, that give teachers the ability to create their own games and make those games available to students, please share them with me. Thanks for watching, and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students.